Hey, hey, Samakam, everybody. Thank you for joining. My name is Anjum. And I really like how those small sentences basically summarize my life of eight years. But yeah, I have a Facebook page, I have an Instagram page, and today we are making vanilla raspberry Swiss roll. I'm just going to jump straight into it. We're not wasting time. I know we're all hungry. Okay, so in today's recipe, it's less about the ingredients and more about the technique. So if you get the recipe, if you get the technique right, you should be fine. We are just going to start off with four cup, uh, four large eggs, room temperature. We have uh, three quarter cups of sugar. I'm just going to turn this down. We have four large eggs, room temperature, three quarter cups of sugar, and then we will do the dry ingredients in a minute. So you just need a KitchenAid with a whisk attachment. And we're just gonna start dumping things in here. Let me know if I need to be louder. Just gonna take four large eggs. If your eggs are cold, just take a measuring cup with some warm water and just dunk your eggs in it. And that should lower the temperature of the eggs. That's four eggs with three quarter cups of white granulated sugar. And we are just going to whisk it first on low. And then we're going to whisk it until it becomes double in size, becomes fluffy and turns into like a yellow custard. Now, the, the tip here is that you have to watch your eggs. One, it has to be room temperature. And secondly, it has to uh, mix continuously for 10 minutes. So we're going to time it's 10, 10 to so 10 till 10, 20. It's going to mix and double in volume, lighter in color, turn into a nice vanilla custard consistency. Okay. So that's going to keep mixing for 10 minutes until 10, 20. In the meantime, we're going to go ahead and make the dry ingredients. In the dry ingredients, we have in a bowl, we have three quarter cup of all purpose flour, a teaspoon of baking powder, Okay, so in a bowl we have three quarter cups of all purpose flour, a teaspoon of baking powder, and we're going to add a little bit of salt. Just a touch just to feel like we've added some salt. So that's ready to go. So after 10 minutes of the eggs, we're going to add this. And then we're going to line up the parchment paper. I am using cake group, but you can also use uh, uh, what's it, spray or butter or just some oil maybe. I just want to make sure that the parchment paper sticks to the side. You want to make sure that the sides are tucked in. And that is why I uh, brush the corners. Yes, you can use spray. You can use oil. You can use butter. You can make a mixture of flour. And uh, you know how you make the samosa chapui, that paste? You can do that. Because all we're trying to do is stick the parchment paper to the corners. Okay, so that's ready. This is ready. And we have, we need two tablespoons of oil. Uh, you want to switch on your oven at 350 Fahrenheit and you will need the middle rack. And you see how the color is 
changing to pale yellow, that's a good thing. See how it's doubling in volume? You can use uh, gluten-free flour, you can use, I don't know, all those healthy kind of flours that there is, you can, but all common flour. Look at this, beautiful. We have five more minutes to go. So we will be using an 11 by 16 uh, sheet cake pan or sheet cake. Uh, you can use something bigger than this. You can use a pirate. But we're ready to use an 11 by 16 pan that this is the Fahrenheit middle rack. If you have a dark color base, lower your temperature to 325. There's four more minutes to go. So in this mixture, we have four large eggs and three quarter cups of granulated sugar. Okay, we have four large eggs and three quarter cups of granulated white sugar. We have to whisk it for 10 minutes on high speed until it has doubled in volume, lighter in color, and it's fluffy like a custard. Okay, so yeah, look at this consistency. It's super thick. Okay. So it's really pale. Okay. You see that? It has really lightened in volume and it was right here and now it's here. Okay. So that is done. Next, we're going to take our mixture of dry ingredients, which was three quarter cups of all purpose flour with a teaspoon of baking powder and some salt. You want to whisk it, do not skip this step. Okay. I'm gonna put it back in my KitchenAid and we are going to whisk it only to combine. This step will be only to combine. We are not making kitchen roll, okay? Just lightly until you don't see the flour anymore. And you can definitely use a handheld mixer or a hand mixer. You don't have to have a kitchen egg. I would not use self-raising flour just because I haven't tried with it and I wouldn't uh, want to say otherwise. So we have only mixed to combine. We are going to add two tablespoons of oil. Now a whisk does not uh, mix all the way to the bottom. So we are going to just Make sure that the flour is not stuck at the bottom because it's just going to fold. So look at that. It's like a nice thick, okay? Like a custardy paste. Just going to dump everything in here. I think the key, the key 
thing over here is to make sure that your eggs have doubled in volume. Okay, and then you're just gonna spread it. I'm just gonna make sure we spread it equally. Also, there was one time I made this recipe where I literally took my flour and I didn't sieve it. And I'm like, eh, who cares? I dumped it in the KitchenAid and all the fluff from the eggs just went poof, like a balloon. So you just want to make sure you sieve it, add some air inside, you know, the particles and I'm gonna put this in my oven in the middle rack, 350 Fahrenheit for 12 minutes. And then we're gonna put a toothpick in the middle, make sure the toothpick comes out clean, okay? So we are done with the cake part. I'm gonna let it back for 12 minutes uh, until the toothpick comes out clean. In the meantime, we are, oh, by the way, I forgot to say that we need one cup of white chocolate. I forgot to add that. So we're gonna use heavy cream. I don't have a measurement. You just wanna add enough to just cover the white chocolate. We're just trying to melt the chocolate so we can form like a paste or like a liquid. And we're gonna put this in the microwave. Always melt chocolate in 30 minute increments. Not more than that, okay? 30 seconds, sorry. I'm trying to do this now because I'm on a time crunch. Uh, so the, I'm trying to lower the temperature of chocolate. It's not too hot when you add it to the whipping cream. But if you're doing it at home for an event, you don't have to rush. Just do this. A lot of people, if you have events, if you have an event on Saturday, do not bake on Saturday afternoon, and, be, and then you have a panic attack, and then you call me. Bake on Friday, prep on Friday, prep your cake on Friday, do everything one day before so that you don't have to call me, <laughs> okay? So it's a very easy technique if you just follow, an easy recipe if you follow just the technique of the fluffing. So let me show you this. It's just white chocolate some whipping cream. All I'm trying to do is melt that chocolate. Now this is going to be so hot, so I cannot add this to the whipping cream because as it is whipping cream is like, you know, soft and uh, whipping cream is a whole different story, but I'm just trying to melt this and then I'm going to add more, put another quarter cup just to lower the temperature. Okay. Perfect. Plus, once this goes in the KitchenAid, it will whip up, but it has to be cool. Or cool, rather. Okay, so this can just cool as we are going. Now, this white chocolate has nothing to do with the cake. It's going to be put in the whipping cream that's going to go in between the layers. So now we are going to take a clean towel, sorry about this. So you need a clean towel, you need a thin towel, you need a lint-free towel where, you know, the material doesn't come out. You're gonna put this here and we're gonna use this to roll the cake, okay? We need powdered sugar, confection sugar or icing sugar, we need a sieve. We are just going to see the towel. This is very, important step, you should not skip the step. And I'll explain why, because when you put the hot cake on this, one, this will prevent it from sticking, and two, the hot cake will melt the sugar and add moisture to the cake, which is a good thing. Choose an approximate, uh, you know, circumference of the 
10. So this is ready to go. And we have six more minutes on the cake to bake. So the cake is gonna come out and we're gonna roll it in this towel and leave it to cool for some time. If you're in a rush, if you have an event and you're in a rush, you can roll this cake and put it in the fridge and then come back after an hour and you can do the filling part and all that. So this is really like, just cool down. Worst case, you can always add more cream to this to just lower the temperature a little bit more. And then I'm going to be putting raspberry jam in between the layer with more whipping cream. And uh, you can put any kind of filling you like. You can put Nutella, you can put ganache, you can put raspberry, strawberry, cookie butter, biscoff. Uh, you don't have to even put whipping cream. I had somebody who got a, a Swiss roll with just jam. I rolled it up and just gave it to her. She didn't want no whipping cream, nothing. So you can do that. It's so in a bowl, another bowl, uh, we are going to take chocolate. Now this part is not, uh, you don't need white chocolate, but you know, one day I was sitting, I was thinking, you know, I was switching hurry, hurry. And I was like, what can we do with raspberry? And I was like, white chocolate would be a good idea. So you don't have to add white chocolate. I just like it that way. Okay. You can use um, one cup of vanilla wafers or uh, chocolate, uh, what are they called? Wafers, vanilla wafers. I buy the brand Gitard. You don't have to. You can buy Wilton. You can buy. Uh, a supermarket brand, does not matter. I'm just gonna take one cup in a bowl like this. And I'm gonna add a little bit of whipping cream to it. I'm kind of trying to make like a ganache, like a quick ganache. The, I, the other important part is when the cake comes out hot, how to roll it, you know, like this. That is, that is the trickiest part is when you roll that. First of all, that is actually the scariest part. And plus, when you open it, you don't know if it's going to crack or it's going to break. Is it going to stick? Anything can happen. So you're going to fix anything that happens. So Miss Kari name, just roll it. The way the cake is baked, I put the toothpick in the middle, came out clean, okay? My, when I went to work, okay, we're gonna release the parchment paper. So flip this on the towel, okay? So the good thing about this is the cake is stuck to the parchment paper. So that's a good thing, all right? So bismillah curry we're just gonna flip this thing directly onto the sugar. Okay, we're gonna release the parchment paper. Because if you don't use parchment paper, I don't know how you're gonna flip it. And then it's gonna crack and break and all that. So this is trash. Now this is hot. So we're going to put more powdered sugar on top of it. Just to make sure it doesn't stick. And be generous, please. Now you're going to roll it. So what I like to do is I like to take this part. And this is a one-time thing. I will not be able to repeat this. So watch. Just watch, okay? So you fold the top, the first part. I'm gonna put the folded part on top. So that will kind of create that middle first, you know, the roll, the, the first inner circle. So I took this, I fold it, I'm gonna fold, and I'm just gonna fold. And you wanna make it a tight roll. You fold, 
in your fold and you just let it be. You can put this in the fridge if you're in a rush. Pick it up, put it on a chopping board, put it in the fridge or the freezer, or just let it be on your counter and let it cool completely, okay? This is done. I'm not gonna touch it. That's it, we are done baking and rolling. So that is done. We're gonna let that cool. So there was a time I made 10 Swiss rolls at that time. So I was putting it in the freezer uh, so that it uh, cools faster so I can go on to the next step. So if you are making that many and you're putting it in the freezer or the fridge, make sure it's like 15 minutes or 30 minutes fridge, 15 minutes in the freezer, because if this thing freezes or over chills in a curled position, and if you uncurl it, it will break. So make sure on the timing if you're making too many of them. Okay. okay, so we will now make the filling for the cake. So we will need a KitchenAid, a whisk. If you don't have two, just wash yours. <coughs> you will need two cups of heavy cream. You will need that melted chocolate that we made initially. It has really cooled down. So there will be the right time to use it. You will also need about a cup of uh, powdered sugar. Take a cup. If you don't want it too sweet, you can do half a cup, but you want to add this. So whipping cream is, a, is very high in fat content. So no matter how much you whisk it and how thick you make it, it will always be loose. It will always be very light. It will melt very quickly. So to maintain the consistency and thickness, you want to add a little bit of powdered sugar so it's thick. Okay. So we're going to start with the whipping cream, make that, and then we will unroll and apply it. Okay. Put the whipping cream, two cups, or even one and a half cup is good. I'd rather have more than less. Okay. I'm gonna whisk it on low. Once it starts to froth up and get a little thicker, we will add the powdered sugar. I'm going to add the chocolate. I'm going to lower it first before it splatters on me. You add the chocolate. If you see, it is getting thicker. The moment you start seeing the lines of the whipping cream, you know it is getting thicker. So I'm going to add the powdered sugar, which is one cup. Okay, so we're trying to make it thick. And that is it. I'm just gonna scrape the sides. So this is another one I made in the morning, okay? So hopefully it hasn't cracked, and if it's cracked, there's no big deal, we can fix it. It's like I'm not even breathing. I'm going to pick it up. Now you can put it on a chopping board, you can put it on a counter, you can be as fancy as you like. 
I'm just gonna put it on my counter. This is trash. Okay. Let's take that, open it up. We're gonna add some jam. Any kind of filling, I'm using raspberry because I'm a sucker for raspberry. You can put strawberry, biscoff, cookie butter, uh, anything you like. You're gonna use an offset spatula. You don't have to use a spatula. You can just use a spoon, you can use a knife. This is my first spatula I ever own. It's been 10 years since I have it. And it's actually my favorite one. It's nice and it should be light to use. It shouldn't be heavy. Okay, so that's done. We're gonna put whipping cream. You can put any kind of jam you want, or don't put jam, you don't have to. You can use uh, any kind of uh, store-bought jam, you can make your jam. Okay. So you put that, cover your sides. Now I wish I wasn't fasting because I'm gonna eat this. Okay. We're gonna roll this, carry it, and put it on your serving tray, okay? Now, this is the scariest part, one of the I'm gonna be gentle. I'm not gonna do this again, so you better watch now. I'm just gonna roll this, okay? You want to pick it up and transfer that. Okay. So that's done. And then I'm going to put this tray on my turntable. A turntable is a very important tool. It does love me. It makes life so much easier. Okay. So you can see that. Okay. And I'm just going to cover it up with the remaining whipping cream. Okay. Just offset spatula. You're just moving your wrist. Okay. Nothing fancy. You can get as fancy as you want. You can layer it up with flowers, with chocolate sprinkles, um, chocolate shavings, you can pipe away on top. But this is the basic uh, sides. or you can just keep it rustic, you don't have to uh, cover all the sides. So, usually, I would first roll it, put it in the fridge for an hour so that the cream inside is super chill because right now it's very soft. So if you chill it, it's much better if you do. It will be easier to handle than when it is you know, soft because we just make the whipping cream. So everything is loose and you can use a scraper, any kind of scraper. Just, you can do just that. You can use a fork to make lines on top. You can just use your spatula and just do, you know, something like that. You can basically do everything, anything you like. Okay, and that is it. You 
can even use an acetate paper to perfect it if you have it, but that's something not everybody has, so I'm not gonna worry about it. That's it. We're gonna use the remaining whipping cream uh, for the next Swiss roll, but this has to chill in the fridge for like an hour or two or until you get that time. Okay, so that is done. I'm just gonna check the one we made. So if it's cool, we can, I can just finish it up. Let's do it. I'm just gonna wait on this for it to cool down completely. And then I will work on it. What would you do if you wanted to make it look pretty? I would uh, do a nice, first of all, I would chill this because it's very, uh, very, the whipping cream is very light right now. I would do some kind of piping on top, just a star tip or, you know, something that I could just go across. I could do some sprinkles. I could do some uh, fresh, uh, what's the thing? Edible flowers. You can get very nice, fancy edible flowers on Amazon. You could do that on top. You can make it rustic. Uh, you could do just a quick drizzle of the jam. So you can you can you can be as creative as you like. I could take the same jam, put it in a piping bag, and just drizzle across. As simple as that. 